My name is Peter McMahon. In 2008, I made a film called My Life about issues I was having with bullying. This is about what happened next. I didn't know you were that kind of guy. It surprised me. Perhaps for the first time, uh, that film, you know, let other people see the problems that you and your friends face. Part of the thing you did when you made your first film was to confront that whole idea of bullying and you decided that you wouldn't give in to it, that you would stand up against it and that you would speak out about it, which is, that's vitally important. I was really taken aback, uh, really, I, I thought the the whole, well, when you were telling the story about uh, your own experience in the bus and how you were treated badly and how you felt about it and hearing how you felt, I thought it was so honest. They were calling me all the loonies of the day and calling me all the spastics of the day and the mongo and saying I had a face like an alien. So basically it's frightening because I'll not open my mouth and say that it's annoying me. I just let them do what they want to do. I'm frightened to stand up to them. Why did you make My Life the first film? Hey, because people don't behave, hey, they don't behave towards people with learning disabilities, they like to bully them. And I think it's sad. And 2000 the year 2010, I think it's still sad that people still want to pick people with learning disabilities. After the success of the film, I felt that not much had changed. So I decided to find out more about experiences that my friends and people with learning disabilities were having with bullying. It seemed that most people I spoke to had suffered from the hands of bullies. Do you ever get, if you ever get make fun of, do yeah, people I'm ever make fun of you? I used to in college. What did you do? Uh, used to laugh at me at college. What college was that? The Donald. That's terrible. Yeah, I've been bullied when I was at one of my clubs um, every Friday. Um, and the guess. So I've been experienced for that. It, it was a nightmare. And it's been no stop after all. I'm glad I've got a new life to lead with my friends and my family. A lot of people has been bullied and I think it's, it was terrible. I had to get money taken off me. And when I used to be at school, I used to get jumped on by the people down, down my street for your different, for your different parts of my street. I just pressed it would stop all the car. We'd always on the bus with them, and people used to go look at him and all that, and you know what they do. And they really, if you're a parent, you get the way I feel. You get really angry. You just can't end up with someone. How can you know? Just turn the other way and you know, you're all sitting looking up coming on the bus. And I mean, it really gets you in here, in the end of your heart. I could tell you the whole story about Peter's life when he was born because it's got my mind over his years. When he was born, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't hear so much harm to you. I mean, I was, I was not well for a couple of years thinking about him, you know what I mean? Of course, he wanted to take him away when he was a baby, and I said, no, I want to keep him. You know what I mean? But I was still broken-hearted, and my wife, she was better than me, she was taking a better than me, she was just, it's just one of these things, because uh, she was a wonderful person. She was great to him, you know? I think you are, you've come on brilliant. I said, I'm very pleased the way you can go over to these, uh, over to the bridge you call it, uh -huh. when you're taking part in all these things. I thought you'd never be able to do that, but this is, I'm really over the moon about that. 
obviously when you come to the writers group every Monday we all enjoy your presence here and your, your eyes and ears within the college because you know so many people here and you know so much of what's going on that uh, it's, it's, it's great to have you in the writers group, you know. I would describe you Peter as a, a wonderfully friendly uh, individual and a very caring brother. And we first met three years ago now, I think, when I came out to Lourdes as the group nurse. And you being the big personality that you are, <laughs> I think you were one of the first people to get me up to dance on the dance floor. It's a week away from my family. It's a week away that you can chill out and relax. Nobody in what's going on in a bit. You can go there and you don't, there's nobody, there's nobody on the bus making fun of you and having a laugh. So that's a week that you can chill out. I know that you send out something like 300 Christmas cards every year, which is probably more than my dad and your four brothers eh, put together. People are up against discriminating people, making fun of disabled. Aye, in certain areas you get that, you'd find quite a bit in certain areas, but I just totally ignore it. I think they're, they're not worth this bloomin' salt, they're probably they're not worth it. Just shouting abuse and fire and stuff at the bus and so on. I've had uh, twice I've had bricks through the windows and stuff. I've brick through the windscreen, I've had a brick through the side window. In the last, inside the last six months, it's been reported, but they've not shown much interest there. Just take it for granted, it's that type of area, these things happen. You know, outside the club, I bring it through the windscreen outside the club, but just, you can't leave the buses really unattended, you've got to keep an eye on them. Just it's just young dads. As we were filming our new documentary, I came to realise that even some people in our film crew had been affected by bullying themselves. My, um... Disability is um, Asperger's syndrome. Uh, it's kind of a mild form of autism, basically. Do you have any bad experience? There was one time when I was I, I, I was really young at the time, and it was something like a boy a boy named William, and I so I despise him, basically. I sort of hate him, and he he told me something about his room, like. If you see in there in the window, there's my room, and then he just punched me in the stomach and done that, this and knocked me out. Well, and that sort of made me lose all confidence of going outside. I'm still kind of like that today. I don't know, I think I was about 10 when that happened. We wee while now, four years. If you are the perpetrator of these kinds of things, not only are you taking away the dignity of the person you're abusing but you're taking away your own dignity and I think I'd want to say to someone who's doing that well look you're better than this yourself you know people people who bully um, they don't I think to do those to act in a certain way you can't think about the consequences because I think if you did you'd be so ashamed and I think sometimes I think your film has that powerful message um, to people who have maybe behaved that way previously or may think of behaving like that in the future. It's, it makes them think of the person that they are hurting, you know, and how that leaves its scars and the hurt doesn't just last for that day or that moment that it's, you know, that it's been acted out, but that goes on for a long, long time thereafter. If nobody says anything and it just goes unchecked, that's... That's, that's pretty bad. When you go in the public buses, people make really fun. I mean, I've took it up with the, com the bus company and nobody's interested. I dare not tell my family because it's very hard to, to tell my family because they would just want to come and catch the three of them and give them a, a piece of their mind. I mean, I've got a very supportive family. Something positive that came from making the film My Life was that I was able to discuss my bullying problems with my family, which I had never done before. I saw that film, I went, you told people yourself exactly how you felt. And I know how I felt, and <laughs> I felt, yeah. Absolutely terrible when you tell me about that. And I couldn't do nothing about it. No, I can remember. At various points in your life, you and my brothers and 
my mum and dad being upset about the problems that you face. I could remember you being upset and I found it very, very upsetting because obviously I love you and so do the rest of the family. And it was a blight in our lives because we don't want to see anyone uh, face that kind of bullying, far less our own brother. Well, I'm eager to learn and eager to do things, but when the boss approached me about running the sales area in May, I said, oh no, I can't do this, can I do this? And now I've achieved something, I can run it. I even tell her to go and take a run and jump because it's my sales area, no hers. Now I'm joined in the studio by Peter Mann. Welcome to Senegal Radio, Peter. Well, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's good to have you on Sunny Govern Radio. So you tell us a bit about yourself. What's what you've been having been bullied, haven't you? Well, um, I travel on first bus and mm -hmm. you get problems. Now, with the support I've raised with making the film, I hope to continue to try to help stop bullying by spreading the word by whatever means I can. It's a lovely achievement now that first bus is interested and the first bus staff have been excellent towards my life number one they didn't realize this was going on thank you driver i go to the bridge and there's two wee boys uh they're twins they thought they were funny, but I mentioned it to a member of the bridge staff and they borrowed a copy of my life number one and now it's hello Peter. It's no, they don't have a laugh now. It's hello Peter. It's nice. 